Um, so, everyone knows what Starbucks is, I'm assuming, right? I don't have to really paint a picture of what their business is. Okay. So, there's Starbucks, which is like the 900 pound gorilla in the coffee space. And then we have Pete's Coffee. We've got a couple other players that are a little bit more niche, and it's just like the coffee business. If you were to like say the word coffee to somebody, most people say, "Oh yeah, Starbucks." Like that's the first word that comes to mind because they have just dominated the marketing on that. But you know, show of hands, can any other than like the crack they put in it, can anybody really tell the difference between Starbucks coffee and like somebody else's coffee? You can. I'm a huge coffee fanatic. Between Blue Bottle and Starbucks, yeah, yeah, you got it. Yeah. Really good coffee. Okay. Even like pizza Starbucks, you know. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Definitely. So here's the idea. Don't be doing this. Just so don't know. Great example. <laughs> yeah. Uh, marketing wise, they're like the anti Starbucks coffee. It tastes totally different. Does taste totally different. Which do you prefer? Uh, you can't get dummy donuts out of here. Yeah. One Which day. sucks, but, but I do like yeah. dummy donuts better when I'm back home on the East Coast. Okay. Uh, I happen to also agree. Because you can go in and order a medium coffee without having to say it's a grande. Uh, <laughs> and you can get some donuts. And you can get donuts, which is a huge win. Um, so, so here's the idea on this. Okay. So my dad and I were talking about this the other day, and he's usually the guy I call whenever I have an idea on this kind of thing, which if anyone was here before you probably remember this story. But um, so we were kind of talking about this. My dad lives in Charlottesville, Virginia. And uh, he, he owns he and my stepmom own a bed and breakfast section called the Inn at Monticello right outside of Thomas Jefferson's Monticello, about a mile up the street. So, Thomas Jefferson, we refer to as this guy, the founding father, right? Well, if you think about it, like, you know, we're all here kind of, in some way, shape, or form, interested in startups, right? I mean, you know, granted, right now, we're kind of, like, not yet at that phase. We're more like the idea phase, and we haven't yet gotten to the startup phase, although it's sort of on the horizon. And then I started thinking about this idea, and we're like, you know, like, what if there was this kind of coffee that was only really sold to people at startup companies? And the whole idea, it sounds sort of silly, right? The whole idea of it was like, okay, most of these startups, they thrive on what? Caffeine. Because caffeine is how you build things. When you're up at three in the morning, and you're coding away, and you're doing all these things, I guarantee you, you are consume some caffeine during that day. And pretty much right now everyone's going to Starbucks. And yeah, we have Pete's Coffee and a couple other places and you know some people are coffee aficionados, some of us are not, but the point is, is the thing I was like, you know what? If any community would sort of understand that David versus Goliath kind of idea of their Starbucks, which is clearly Goliath, versus like this other kind of upstart coffee place, which would be us, which is definitely David, you know, the startup community has to be it, because that's their whole ethos. They understand that, they get it. So we got to talking about this, and so kind of put some of these things together here. You've got Monticello, which is where Jefferson lived. You've got you know, Jefferson himself, which was, you know, again, called a founding father. And you have this idea of the United States, which frankly is a startup country. I mean, if you recall, like back in the day, this idea of the United States was like 13 colonies, and before that it was a bunch of these drunks up in Boston who were at the beer halls, and they were like, you know what, taxes. Like, they were sick of this kind of thing, right? You know, the, the, you had the tea party, you had like all this kind of stuff that happened. And a lot of it stemmed from the fact that like a lot of these guys came out of the beer halls, they were upset about this and that, they were upset about like not having the rights, about having all the red coats in their city, and eventually they were called rebels. And this is, by the way, actually where we get the idea of Sam Adams' beer. So you have two guys. Like John Adams was the lawyer who was kind of the you know, intellectual of the day and um, actually defended the British at the uh, following the Boston Massacre. If any of you've seen the show John Adams on HBO, they go through this in some depth. And then you had his cousin, Samuel Adams, who was like up until that point a failure in all things in life, but who was great at organizing people and getting them enthusiastic about this. So all of this is kind of coming around to this idea of you have, what we got to talking about was this idea of like either startup coffee or founders blend coffee. Again, we haven't figured out a name yet, but the whole sort of basis behind it is a lot of the beverage industry, particularly coffee, is the marketing behind it. I mean, yes, obviously the product has to be good and it has to be sort of, um, you know, all things people expect it to be, but a lot of it is the marketing. 
and this is definitely true in the booze industry, beer industry, you know, uh, coffee, tea, all that kind of stuff. So we got to think, well, you know, could you sell this kind of coffee directly to people and kind of target the startup industry and hope to gain a foothold there? And um, that's kind of where we left it. I thought it was a cool idea. My dad thought it was an all right idea. And I was like, well, you know, hey, I'll be here and throw it out there if the next idea kicks, see what people think of it, and we'll, we'll have an idea about it. And anyway, at this point, I'll turn it over and see what everybody thinks. Well, I think that there's definitely a market for that. I think Starbucks themselves realize that their kind of Goliath vision in the whole market is hurting them. And they've actually started rebranding Starbucks or debranding Starbucks, making them appear to be a regular mom and pop coffee shop, removing right. all the Starbucks branding, changing all the, the names of everything, and kind of coming up with unique Starbucks that are, you know, they're still part of the corporation, but they look nothing like the Starbucks. Right. Um, so I think that kind of just speaks to, I mean, if the Goliath is trying to pretend to be David, then that's, sure. there's got to be room for David. And I think there's been. David's out there that have been making a, their own space, whether it's Blue Bottle or, you know, even, even Pete's started out small right. here in the Bay Area, so. Pete, Pete started here in the Bay Area? Yeah, I think it was Berkeley. Yeah. Uh, was Berkeley if I was wrong. Yeah. That. Okay. Um, yeah, when, when we first got to talking about this, I was like, I could name Starbucks, I couldn't actually, and then Pete's, I couldn't even actually think of another coffee company. There's like, uh, there's one in the D.C. area, which, again, like, the name is unremarkable, such that I can't even remember it. But it's like Starbucks has so much dominance of this category. And in particular, dominance of the idea of like if you're gonna go somewhere else, like kind of that third place as Howard Schultz refers to it. Um, that like, I mean, it's almost like they have just destroyed any even utterance of competition. Um, so we gotta think about it. Like obviously you're not gonna create a whole bunch of retail chains. That's hugely expensive and has a lot of other challenges. But if you could sell directly to the companies, particularly in the startup world, that you know might kind of value this uh, this idea. Um, we thought we could you know carve out an interesting business there. Yeah. Uh, I mean, basically, like, like it happens again and again that like people who are in the startup community realize that the startup community has needs and, and decide to get into picks and shovels instead of golding. Um, <laughs> and, and, and and this this is kind of in the same vein. Sure. Um, the, and, and the, the coffee idea also has the same kind of thing. Um, that startup people love coffee. Um, if you give them the right opportunity to buy it, and it's good coffee, and and, and uh, I'm sure they love it. And if you made it kind of a, like a non-profit thing, where like, because right. you're not going to make billions of dollars off sure. of this anyway. And so so if you just sort of like said, hey, like we're going to donate this money to support X, and maybe it's part of something in the startup world, maybe yeah. it's a charity, probably get a lot of people into it. Maybe if Founds more idea kicks. Who knows? <clears throat> Maybe you could do something with technology, put a technology aspect into it. So you probably just want to ship directly to the startups or whatever. Right. If you could track, like, have an online portal where you can say, "We're getting low. This is where we're at. Like, we're at half of our bag of." Costs. That's a good idea. Yeah. And then, and then maybe track that and can, you know, I don't know if you could integrate in with project scheduling or something like, oh, we've got a big release coming and send an extra yeah. bag, or uh, maybe we're, we're, we're in Facebook <laughs> lockdown, we need more coffee. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I like that. Some, cool some kind of like gimmick that could kind of, I mean, if you could, you know, I don't know, build a coffee machine that knows how much coffee you've made, True. then we'll automatically should be something like, I know at previous jobs, that was always a big deal, it's who's right. going to buy the next bag of coffee, and, right. you know, it wouldn't happen sometimes, you know, someone stingy you wouldn't Right. And everybody was well, so the, a lot of this I was getting out of a, um, there was a blog post, uh, the, the, so the guy that started uh, Mahalo, I'm blanking on his name right now, I can't think of it, but whatever. <laughs> the guy that started Mahalo, he was talking, he had this great blog post about like how to run a startup from a financial point of view, and a lot of it had to do with like, you know, pay your employee cell phone bill, so they like, and don't buy an actual phone system, it's cheaper, right? Um, buy lunch for everybody in the office, don't have them leave. Like, it was kind of all these things, like, spend a lot of money on expensive chairs so people are comfortable, but don't spend any money on desks, it doesn't matter. And like, this whole like list of things on kind of like how you should allocate resources in a startup. And um, like, one of the things he mentioned was talking about like, you know, the buying, co have a coffee machine at the office, it's awesome, as opposed to having people go to Starbucks externally because of the time loss. 
So when I kind of thought of that, it made sense. I was like, ship directly in. So anyway, that's my time. If anyone likes this idea, these videos are going to be up as well as everybody else's, and appreciate it. Thank you. I have a comment about the names. I like um, the romance of founders, but I think I like Startup Coffee a little bit better because it's applicable to the startup world, mm -hmm. but it also is appealing to the art because it has another meaning like... like how you start your day? Yeah. 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 Well, you could do yeah. like Startup Coffee and then have Founders one. Right. Branch out. <laughs> and have sure. You could yeah. pay like $12 million to the Rolling Stones for the rights to start me up. We can do that. Well, if we had $12 million, we probably would use it differently than that, but yes. Code monkey crap. I swear there's crap in Starbucks. That's my interpretation. That's my time. Thank you. You can aggregate your old coffee you So you're not making your own coffee, you're just going to all the best ones and then you know, going to figure out, figuring out who likes what.